Good morning and welcome to Tuck Shop Tales. My name is Claire McNichol and I'm really happy to be here with you this morning. Now before I sat down to tell my Tuck Shop Tales today, I went on a walk with my little dog called Chloe. She's a gorgeous chocolate coloured cockapoo. And we went walking along by the water of Leith and I found something that reminded me of a riddle. So I'm going to ask you the riddle and see if you can get the answer. It goes like this. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. A wee wee man in a red, red coat. A staff in his hand and a bone in his throat. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. What do you think that is? I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you the riddle again because you could maybe learn it if you hear it a second time. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. A wee wee man in a red, red coat. A staff in his hand and a bone in his throat. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. Have you guessed? I'll give you a clue. You could have this as a tasty snack for your tuck shop tales today. I wonder if you've got any tasty snacks there with you. I'll show you what it is. You'll find these hanging from the trees just now. The cherries are out already. They're not maybe quite ripe enough to eat, but they're already red. And this is the riddle. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. A wee wee man in a red, red coat. A staff in his hand, the stalk, and a bone in his throat, the stone. Come a riddle, come a riddle, come a rot tot tot. So maybe we'll have a wee song about cherries at the end of our stories today. But I'm going to start with a story about a hat. And you know we've had some lovely, lovely warm days in Scotland so far for the summer, haven't we? So this is my lovely summer hat that I wear on the days when the sun is beating down. And this story takes place on a day when the sun is beating down. And the story comes from India. <clears throat> now there was once a hat seller. And he sold all kinds of hats that you can possibly imagine. He sold fancy hats, the kind you might wear to go and see the races, for, for example. And he sold lovely kind of hats you might wear for a wedding. And he sold, oh, he sold nice felt hats. And he sold tartan hats. And he sold sombreros. And he sold cowboy hats. He sold all kinds of hats. Now, this hat seller made his way one day to the market to sell his hats. But it was one of those days when the sun was beating down and he got so hot and so tired and the journey was so long. He was halfway to the market and he thought, I have to have, take a rest. And what did he see but a tree and underneath the tree, this lovely cool shade. So he walked over and he sat down underneath the tree and sat in the cool shade and immediately felt better. You know that feeling when you get out of the hot baking sun and you get into the lovely cool shade? Well, he sat there and he wasn't long before he felt so sleepy and his eyes closed and he fell fast asleep and he began to snore. Well, unbeknownst to the hat seller, in the branches of the tree above his head, were lots of cheeky monkeys. I think some of you might be cheeky monkeys. Yeah, I can definitely see some cheeky monkeys out there. Well, when the hat seller was sleeping, the cheeky monkeys climbed down the tree and they began to take the hats off his head. One took the cowboy hat and went up to the branches of the tree and went, oh, 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 oh. and another one. Well, that one took the sombrero and went, oh, 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 oh. and one took the tartan hat and he climbed back up the trees and he went, oh, oh, oh. and one, well, she fancied the nice brown, the brown felt hat and she put it on and went, oh, oh, oh. and one thought this blue hat would be lovely for a wedding. So she put it on and she went, oh, oh, oh. and finally, one fancied the hat that you would wear to the races and she put it on and she went, oh, oh, oh. well, soon the tree was full of cheeky monkeys with all kinds of hats going, oh, oh, oh. can you do that? Well, all the sound of the cheeky monkeys woke up the hat seller and he, he looked around and he felt on the top of his head and he, he saw that his hats had, had vanished and he was 
and all around the place and eventually he followed the sound of the cheeky monkeys and he looked up to the branches of the tree and he saw the monkeys with his hats on and they were all going Ooh! well he was very very cross and so he shook his fist at the monkeys and he said give me back my hats can you do that back to me because that's just what the monkeys did to him they went and then he was really even more angry with the monkeys and he went he stamped his feet and he shook his fist and he said give me back my hats can you copy the monkeys mm, 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 mm. and finally he was so angry that he took his hat and he threw it on the floor and he said give me back my hats and the monkeys did just the same they went mm, 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 mm. and they threw down all of the hat seller's hats well he was very happy and one by one he put his hats back on the top of his head and he made a great big pile of all of his wonderful colourful hats stacking them up one by one until they were there in a big pile and he made his way to the market and as he got to the marketplace he cried out hats for sale hats for sale come and buy my lovely hats and you know he had great luck at the market that day and he managed to sell all of his wonderful hats and that is the story of the hat seller and the monkeys now that's a story for a sunny day when you need to be wearing your sun hat but you know in Scotland, well, we get some days in the summer that are sunny and some days like today that are rainy. And so I've got another story for you about a rainy day and a rain hat. Now this story is about a little girl called Emma. And Emma was at nursery school. Now the thing was that her nursery teacher and her mum didn't really know what to do with her because she was a very forgetful wee girl. She would head into nursery in the morning and she would forget to bring her wee snack and she would go home at the end of the day and she would forget to bring home the toy that she'd taken to nursery that day. And her mum and her nursery teacher didn't know what to do with her. But for all that, they knew that Emma was a very, very clever wee girl. Well, it was a Saturday and it was pouring down with rain. Can you make the, the rain for me? And Emma looked out and it was, it was really raining cats and dogs. One of those days, torrential rain. And she'd done all kinds of things in the house that morning. She'd kind of... She'd done a wee jigsaw and she'd played with her dolls and she'd done a bit of colouring and watched a bit of TV and now she'd run out of things to do and she really wanted to go out and play but she knew her mum would never let her out to play in the rain unless she had all of her rain things on. So she went to the cupboard and she took out her bright red Wellington boots and she put them on. Can you put on your Wellingtons like this? And then she went and she got her lovely bright yellow raincoat and she put that on. And it had a zip and she zipped it up, zip, and then she looked for her matching red, red, yellow hat. And she looked all over the house, she looked in her bedroom, she looked in the living room, she looked in the hallway, could not find this rain hat. And then all of a sudden she remembered she'd left it at nursery. So what was she to do? Well, I told you she was a very bright wee girl and what did she do? But she went and she got the Edinburgh paper, the evening news. And she decided to make herself a rain hat out of the newspaper. So she began to fold this hat out of the newspaper. <clears throat> and as she folded the hat, she sang a wee song that went like this. You could join in with me. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He went to bed and bumped his head and couldn't get up in the morning. And when she'd finished, she'd made a perfect little soy wester that fitted her head just like this and she popped on her wee soy wester rain hat and she went out to play in the rain and she was dancing around in the puddles and she was going you, you might know this song it goes like this i'm singing in the rain just singing in the rain what a glorious feeling i'm hap happy again when all of a sudden she heard this nino 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 have you any idea what it was it was bright red it was a fire engine 
and she watched as a fire engine went hurtling to the end of the cul-de-sac where she lived and there was her neighbour's house on fire. So she didn't hesitate. She quickly took off her rain hat and she gave it a quick fold and she transformed her rain hat into a firefighter's hat. And she popped on her firefighter's hat and she ran down and she said to the chief of the fire, fire brigade, can I help? He said, oh, I'm so glad you've come. He said, could you take a hose? So she took a hose and all the firefighters had the hoses and they all went, shh. And they hosed and they hosed and they hosed until the fire went out. Well, when they'd finished, the chief shook Emma's hand. He said, thanks very much, Emma. We'd never been able to do that without you. He said, no bother. She said, any time you need a hand, just give me a call and I'll be there. So the chief and all the firefighters got back in the fire engine and off they went back down the street. Nino, Nino, Nino. <clears throat> well, when they'd all disappeared, she looked around and she saw that her street had been transformed into an ocean. And that gave her an idea. She decided she was going to become a pirate. So she took off her firefighter's hat and she transformed it into a wee pirate hat. And she went along with her pirate hat and she covered up one eye as if she had a patch and she hobbled along as if she had one wooden leg and she went ha 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 and then she stopped and she thought wait a minute nobody's going to take me seriously as a pirate unless I've got my own boat. So she took off her pirate hat and she transformed it into a boat and she hopped inside her boat and she sang a wee song as she went along you might know it goes like this what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Early in the morning, oorey, and up she rises, oorey, and up she rises, oorey, and up she rises, early in the morning. But then disaster, her boat struck a lamppost and the front of her boat was torn off. And then her boat struck the side of the house and the back of her boat was torn off. And then, the wind blew up. Can you help me make the sound of the wind? Shh, shh, shh. And the wind snapped the mast of her boat right in half. She's never going to see my mum again. What am I going to do? Because she didn't know how to swim. But do you remember how smart she was? So she looked underneath a seat in the boat. And what do you think she found there? If it wasn't a perfect little life jacket just the right size so she popped it over her head and she swam all the way home to her mum and her mum just could not believe the adventures that emma had got up to that day in her rain hat and that is the end of the story well now <clears throat> i would like to tell you a story that comes from a scottish traveler man called stanley robertson and I was lucky enough to know Stanley and he told me this story. Now, it just, we're just past midsummer, aren't we, when we have the longest day. And this story takes place on a midsummer's day. Now, it's a story about a boy called Jack. And Jack worked for a laird. Now, the laird was a very mean and miserly man, so he didn't pay Jack very well at all for his job. But you know, despite that, Jack loved his work. See, he looked after the sheep and the hillside where he worked was just so beautiful. He would look down into the glen and at the bottom of the glen was a big, wide, silvery blue river. And between the months of May and September, Jack would often see a salmon leap up out of the water and then dive back down beneath the surface. And along the riverbank grew these birch trees. But Jack's absolute favourite place on the hillside was the ring of ancient oak trees that grew on the very top of the hill. And on very, very hot days, Jack could go in there and get shelter from the blazing sunlight. And on very, very cold, wet, windy, stormy days, he could go in underneath the shelter of the trees and he would be protected from the wild elements. But it wasn't only Jack that took shelter amongst those oak trees. There was all kinds of creatures and hundreds of birds had their nests in the branches of the oak trees. Now Jack had spent so long on the hillside that he could understand the language of the birds. And one day 
all the birds rose up out of their nests and they began cheeping and tweeting and chirping and twittering. And Jack said to one of the wee robins, what's happening? And the robin said, well, Jack, the trees are going to dance tonight and we don't want to be shuggled out of our nests. So we're going to spend the night away and we'll be back tomorrow. And the birds flew off and the sky was dark with them leaving. Well, just at that, who should arrive up the hillside but the laird himself? And the laird had seen the birds fly away and the laird knew that Jack could talk to the birds. So the laird said, what are the birds saying to you, Jack? And Jack said, well, the birds have just said the trees are going to dance tonight. Is that so, said the laird? I've heard stories about those trees and I've heard there's treasure beneath them. Oh, I'll be back here tonight, Jack, and I'll take my chances. I'll have a big sack and I'll fill it full of the treasure. Well, the laird went away and it was about lunchtime and Jack could feel he was getting very hungry as Tommy was rumbling. And his mum arrived, as she always did at lunchtime, with a bannock and some cheese. And the two of them sat together and they shared the bannock and cheese. And as they were eating their lunch, Jack's mother said to him, Jack, I had an awfully strange dream last night, she said, son. I dreamt that the oak trees there at the top of the hill began to dance. And when they rose out of the ground, Jack, there was treasure beneath them in their birth spots. And I remembered my mum and dad used to tell me that every 60 years, those oak trees dance. But Jack, the story goes, that if you're greedy and you take too much treasure, you will never live to tell the tale. Well, Jack listened to his mother's advice and it, she said, Jack, tonight when the trees dance, she said, if they dance and you want to take some treasure, son, please don't be greedy, only take a little bit. And I've made something to protect you here tonight because I think it could be dangerous on the hillside tonight, Jack. And his old mother handed him a rope that was knitted and it had 12 hoops in it. Keep that by your side, son, at all times. Well, Jack always wore a leather satchel over his, over his shoulder and round his waist. So he packed the wee knitted woolen rope into his leather satchel and he kept it by his side. And the day wore on and he minded the sheep as usual. And as the sky, the sun began to sink and the sky grew pink, up the hillside he saw a wee figure coming with a black shawl held tightly around her head and he saw it was Mary, his sweetheart. Now she worked as a servant for the laird in the castle and when Mary got up to him she says Jack I've come to warn you the laird he's pacing up and down in the castle and he's muttering your name underneath his breath and he's got a dagger Jack and I'm awful frightened he might harm you tonight Jack. But don't you worry Mary I can look after myself. You better go back down now before it gets dark. So Mary started to make her way back down the hill. And it wasn't long after that that the moon came out bright and full. And as the moon was shining in the sky, this lovely silvery music began to play. Well, Jack looked down the hillside and he saw the wee slender birch trees rising up out of the ground and he began to leap and skip and hop up the hillside. And then behind Jack, Jack could see the great big ancient oaks rising up out of the ground, trailing their roots behind them, and they began to lumber down the hillside. And soon the ancient oaks and the wee slender birches, they intertwined their branches and they began to whirl round and around in a wild kiwi dance. And the faster those trees whirled and danced, the faster the silvery music played, and the faster the silvery music played, well, the faster the trees dance and Jack had never seen such a wondrous sight as that. But soon he heard the crack of a twig and he turned around and there his face was the red angry face of the laird and the laird was brandishing his dagger right in Jack's face and he was saying, keep away from old Crowley's birth spot. That treasure belongs to me Jack. I'll have the treasure of the biggest of oaks. Don't you come near my treasure, Jack. And at that, the laird jumped into the birth spot that belonged to the biggest of the oak trees, the one called Old Crowley, because of its gnarled face. But Jack, he remembered his mother's wise words. And so he went to the smallest of the birth spots of the smallest of the oaks 
and he stepped inside and very, very selectively took a little gold, a little silver, a piece of jade, a piece of turquoise, and he put the treasure into his pockets. But even though he'd only taken a little treasure and he hadn't been in the ground very long, when he looked up to his horror, he saw he'd sunk deep beneath the earth. And he tried to get a handhold to pull himself back up, but the earth just came away in his hand. And he tried to get a foothold to clamber out, but his foot just slipped beneath him. And his heart began to pound in his chest with fright. But just as he was beginning to really panic, he heard a voice saying, Jack, Jack, is that you? And he looked up and over the side of the birth spot, who did he see but Mary, his sweetheart? She'd been too worried about him to go back down the hill and she'd stayed up there to look out for him. Well, he remembered, of course, that his mother had given him the magic rope with the 12 hoops. So he unfastened his satchel and he threw the end of the rope up to Mary and he said, catch Mary, and she caught it. And she found a big, heavy boulder and she looped the rope around the boulder and Jack was able to clamber up through the 12 hoops like a wee mountain goat. Well, they hauled up the rope and Jack said, come on, Mary, we'll need to go and try and help the laird. They ran to the birth spot of old Crowby and they threw in the rope and they shouted warnings to the laird. Hurry up, the trees have stopped their dancing. The oaks are on their way back. Hurry up. Well, I don't know if it was because the laird was too deep beneath the earth to hear them or whether it was his ears were stopped up with greed, but he did not hear their warning. And there was no sign of him. So they had no choice. They ran back to the edge of the oaks and they lay in the bushes on their tummies and they watched as the great big oak trees lumbered back up the hillside, hovered over their birth spots for a moment and then sank their roots deep back into the earth, never to move again for another 60 years. Well, the laird, he was never seen or heard of again after that night. And Jack, he was able to take the wee, the, the jewels that he'd gathered and he was able to get enough money to buy a little whitewashed cottage by the side of the river, alongside the birch trees. And him and Mary, they got married. And every day his mum would nip along for lunch and they would sit and have a wee bite of bannock and cheese. And that is the end of the story of the night that the trees danced on Midsummer's Night on a Scottish hillside. Now, we're getting near the end of our story time today and I would like to sing you a little song that's kind of got riddles in it. So you'll see, you'll hear the riddles as I sing and you'll, I'm going to stop and see if you can answer them. Now, one of the riddles you might already know because it's about a cherry. I'm going to sing the song. Let's see how you get on answering the riddles. I gave my love a cherry without a stone. I gave my love a chicken without a bone. I gave my love a story without an end. And I gave my love a baby with no crying. How can there be a cherry without a stone? How can there be a chicken without a bone? How can there be a story without an end? And how can there be a baby with no crying? So how can there be a cherry without a stone? How can there be a cherry without a stone? How can there be a chicken without a bone? How can there be a story without an end? And how can there be a baby with no crying? A cherry when a flower, it has no stone. A chicken when it's in the egg, it has no bone. A story of I love you, it has no end. And a baby when it's sleeping has no crying. Well, thank you very much for coming along to Tuck Shop Tales today. It's been lovely to spend some time with you all. And please remember to come back next Tuesday at 11 o'clock when you'll be able to hear my good friend Heather Yule, who plays the harp and tells stories. So come and hear uh, Heather next week, Tuesday at 11, and have a good week until then. Bye-bye.